Hello everyone, welcome to scardia.com and now let's start with the first section of our lecture topic B9 lesions of the cervix in which we will talk about cervical ectopy. In this section we will talk about what's the pathogenesis of cervical ectopy, how cervical ectopy present and how it is diagnosed and what's the management of cervical ectopy. First, what is cervical ectopy? Cervical ectopy is a condition in which the squamous epithelium of the ectocervix is replaced by columnar epithelium. The cervix is the lower part of the uterus and it has two main parts, endocervix and the ectocervix. Endo, endo as the name shows is the inner part. Endo is the inner, ecto is the outer surface. The endocervix is very, very fragile and soft and vascular portion and it is lined by the columnar epithelium. The ectocervix is lined by hard squamous epithelium. So that's the difference between the lining of the endocervix and the ectocervix. So in ectopy, the, what happens in cervical ectopy is the squamous epithelium of the ecto, outer cervix, is replaced by the columnar epithelium, which is normally present in the inner uh, cervix. So that's the main uh, changes that's taking place in cervical ectopy. Here if you see in this diagram, this is the cervical canal. This is the normal squamocolumnar junction. It's the junction where the uh, epithelial cells, squamous epithelium of the endocervix meets with the columnar epithelium of the ectocervix. This is also known as the transformation zone or junction. This is the glandular, glandular structure or of the endocervix. This is the endocervix. If you see in this diagram, this is the ectopy in which the squamous epithelium is replaced by the columnar epithelium. So that's what ectopy is. So ectopy, cervical ectopy is the, actually is the replacement of the cells of the ectocervix by the cells of the endocervix. What are the etiology is the causes? What are the causes of the cervical ectopy? Okay. So it can be congenital, which occurs or present at birth, or it may be acquired. Acquired are usually due to hormonal factors or it can be due to infection. Different infections of the cervix can lead to uh, metaplasia or changes in the epithelial lining that can cause cervical ectopy. Another important acquired factor is the hormonal factor. Different hormonal changes can lead to cervical ectopy. So it's common in the reproductive age. It's not common after the menopause. So in the reproductive age, hormonal changes or increase in the estrogen level can cause ectopy. Also patients who are on oral contraceptive pills, which have high level of estrogen can cause or can present with the cervical ectopy. So ectopy can be due to acquired or congenital factors. Congenital is present at birth. Acquired is uh, later on. It can be due to different infections. As infections like human papilloma virus infection, which can lead to also cervical cancer and it can bring changes in the cells or epithelial lining of the cervix. Same different hormonal factors can lead to ectopy. 
Pathogenesis is uh, here, it is of uh, three main type ectopy, depending on what type of cells are present. This is the cervical canal. This is this just the simple or flat ectopy. Here you can see flat ectopy. Here these are the follicles. So it's called the follicular ectopy. And in this, these are the projections, papillary projection, and this is known as the papillary ectopy. So depending on the appearance of the lining of the cervix, divided ectopy is divided into three main types. We have papillary, if papilla are formed, follicular, if the follicle like this is formed, or simple or flat. In this, no papilla or no follicles are present. So depending on the histological or microscopic appearance of the type of epithelium, it is divided into three types papillary, follicular, and simple or flat. Now, how the cervical ectopy present? It can be completely asymptomatic. Asymptomatic means absence of symptoms, no symptoms. Usually the uh, diagnosis is made on the examination, on pelvic examination, but patient has no symptoms. If patient present with symptoms, the symptoms are usually uh, backache, uh, vaginal discharge is present, there might be infertility present, pelvic pain and contact bleeding. If uh, cervix is touched or after the um, intercourse, usually there is bleeding or during the pelvic exam or vaginal examination, patient present with bleeding. Because the endocervix, the epithelium of the endocervix is very, very uh, vascular and it is easily, it bleeds very easily. So when that epithelium epithelium is present on the outer surface of the cervix, it has a tendency to bleed very easily. So bleeding is present. Vaginal discharge also is present, especially when it is associated with infections. There is vaginal discharge, which can be foul-smelling vaginal discharge. So these are the symptoms if present in the patient. Now, signs uh, of the uh, cervical ectopy when the patient ex is examined, uh, usually if, if patient is with ectopy present with this uh, C is patient with simple ectopy and usually there is a redness of the area surrounding the cervical opening. So this is the ectopy when there is replacement of the cells. This is on examination, these are the polyps present. Polyps are the abnormal growth. If they have stalk, they are pedunculated. If no stalk, they are the sessile polyps. So these are the polyps coming out of the cervical os or opening. This is the polyp with ectopy. Here you see these are only the polyps. The surrounding is no redness, nothing. So it's simple polyps. In this picture or diagram, you see these are the polyps growth coming out of the cervix along with ectopy. This is the surrounding redness or replacement of the cells. They appear reddish, red color surrounding is polyp with the ectopy. Again, no polyp is simple ectopy surrounding. This is the cervical opening. Then eversion, this is the eversion of the cervix. Eversion is the folding out of the cervical opening or eversion. Inversion inside, folding inside of the cervical opening. So eversion is folding out of the cervical opening. So this is the eversion. Then on the speculum, vaginal speculum examination, if there is ectopy present, what's, what, how the patient will present? Usually there is a bright red area surrounding the os or active ectocervix. As we mentioned here, this is the surrounding red area uh, around the ectocervix or the opening of the cervix. 
Then outer edge. Here in this diagram, you can also see the outer edge of the ectopy is very clearly demarcated. So it's clearly demarcated, it is smooth, or sometimes have some papillary fold. Papillary fold if it's papillary ectopy. So this is smooth margin, sometimes maybe have papillary folds. It's um, neither tender nor bleed to touch. On rubbing with a gauze piece, usually when you rub the area with a gauze piece, it has oozing spot. Usually the blood comes out or it ooze a little. So rubbing or touching because it bleeds on contact. So it's uh, on rubbing with the gauze, usually multiple oozing areas are present. So this is very clearly if there is a polyp, polyp with ectopy, simple ectopy or eversion. On examination, there is a red area surrounding the cervical opening. It's demarcated, well demarcated. Margins are smooth, sometimes papillary fold may be present. So this is the uh, signs and how the patient with ectopy present on examination. Next, what's the differential diagnosis of ectopy, uh, some ectropion. Ectropion and ectopy, pretty much same conditions. In ectropion also, the outer cells are replaced by the inner cervical cells. Early carcinoma, early carcinoma can also be mm, uh, confused sometime with the cervical ectopy. If there is a lesion or tear, a lesion of the cervix, it also present with redness, bleeding that can be confused with the cervical ectopy. Or if there is ulcer as a result of tuberculosis, genital tuberculosis, it can present as, uh, or it can can be confused with the cervical ectopy. So all these are the differential diagnosis. Here ectropion is pretty much the same as the ectopy. These two terms are cinema, cin used together. And eh? ectropion, this is the carcinoma, ectopy, and also tubercular ulcer is com comes under the differential diagnosis of cervical ectopy. Next, the management of um, cervical ectopy. Uh, usually, management depends on the cervical cytology is performed and uh, a smear is taken from the cervix and it is examined to find out if there is any malignancy or dysplasia. In patients who have symptoms or symptomatic cases usually are um, uh, detected during pregnancy and early purpurium. Purpurium is the period six weeks after the delivery. So usually they are detected during pregnancy and purpurium. Uh, and treatment should be uh, withheld for at least 12 weeks postpartum. If patient is using pills, as we mentioned, it occurs mostly in if there is high estrogen levels, uh, uh, patient is on pills, you, pills should be stopped and it's better to advise the patient to go on the uh, uh, barrier method of contraception. So treatment withheld for at least 12 weeks postpartum if diagnosed within the uh, pregnancy. Postpartum is after the delivery. If persistent ectopy, if patient has persistent ectopy and there is troublesome discharge, usually uh, it's suggested or it's better to go for surgical management of ectopy, which consists of thermal cauterization. Thermal is by heat, burning or cautery. Cryosurgery, cryo is with cold. So different methods of uh, cauterization are used with heat or cold and then also laser therapy or la laser vaporization of the ectopy is done. So that was all about the cervical ectopy and its management and presentation.
Thank you for watching Scardia.com.